Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, and we have a beer here in front of us. This is one that I brew uh, every year, actually. This is the Harvest Ale, but the 2023 version of the Harvest Ale. And why is it a Harvest Ale? Well, I use my own homegrown hops. And uh, this time around, it was a second pick of the Chinook hops. Second pick because there was a bunch of hops that were ready for a picking around the beginning of September, and then there was another batch that uh, had a, a longer growing season, I guess. <laughs> a later bloom for sure, and I, I picked that all late, late September, and that is what went in here, the, the larger of the two uh, harvests uh, went to this uh, beer. So let's start from the very beginning. This is a uh, five gallon batch in the keg. We started off with nine gallons of spring water and added uh, five grams of gypsum to it. Grains kept it pretty simple. Uh, did a 95% split of Brees Pilsner malt and 5% of Simpson's Red Rye Crystal Malt. Nice. Isn't that interesting? That's so, fun. So I, I like this uh, 95, 5% um, pale Formula. ale split. Yeah. I, I think Sierra Nevada, I think yep. ESB, classic ESBs use the same split. So instead of using, uh, you know, a, a 60 Love Crystal Malt, I thought Red Rye would be interesting to see what kind of... <laughs> Notes it would bring to the final beer. The hops are as followed. Again, all homegrown Chinook hops. We did 1.5 ounces first wort hopping. At 30 minutes to go in the boil, we did another ounce and a half for 43 grams. And then 1.25 ounces, that's how much I had left of the second. Um, as you do. As, as I do, but we put that in with two minutes to go in the boil. Homegrown hops, I, I don't really want to do any kind of whirlpool. I really do want to like make sure Things uh, get hit with the old uh, boiling temperatures just to make sure none of the bugs or anything else uh, get into the final beer. The yeast, very important because I think I had success with this two years ago. One packet of Lal Brew Verdant IPA dry yeast. Uh, procedures, mash at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. I boiled for 60 minutes. Fermented at uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius for two weeks. Outcome 1054, starting gravity. Final gravity 1012, or an ABV of 5.64%. Well, not right. bad. It's um, it's kind of cleared out from being in the keg for a week and a half. Yeah, this was true. ready for U.S. Thanksgiving, so we enjoyed it while we deep fried turkey. Okay. So, what are you thinking? Um, well, I love the color. I love it when beer comes out that orangey color. Um, the very first ar aroma I got when I first smelled it, I, I, this is even before you said it, it hit me as being very Sierra Nevada-like. So there's a little bit of, at first at least, there was a little bit of a citrusy aroma on there. Not super strong one way or another, but mostly pineapple. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, Pine? Or grapefruit. Grapefruit. grapefruit yes. I was trying to not use the word piney. <laughs> um, so classic Sierra Nevada, uh, grapefruity, and um, but the, on the flavor on the palate, it's more um, herbal. It's more. Uh, it's very. It's northern brewer like to me. Okay. Right. That hop northern brewer. Yep. Um, reminds me a little bit of like um, um, California Common type of hop profile. So it's a little bit um, herbally, a little bit spicy, a little bit whatever earthy. Um, but in a super, super pleasant way. Normally I'm not a big yeah. fan of that, yeah, that type of thing, but it's pretty good. And then, uh, but it balances well. The, the, the malt backbone, the, that crystal red rye is um, holding it all together because Pilsner Malt just be pretty plain yeah. Pilsner Malt, but um, it's really lending a lot to it uh, body-wise and uh, just a little bit of backbone to help support that hop character. The bitterness is relatively, um, it's not like a super clean bitterness. It's like a... It's an assertive bitterness, but at this level, it hasn't been overly bittered. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's definitely, you drink it, and it helps cut through that crystal rye presence, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you're left with that northern brewer-like, piney, earthy, you know, herbally mm. f uh, flavor profile and finish. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny. I Yeah, I think in, in years past, we've had uh, the Verdant has brought out more uh, fruit of fruit flavors. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's a, an assertive um, 
herbal, earthy, hop presence, but I'm left with um, a pleasant bitterness of, uh, of the hops, uh, and it lingers for a long time. It kind of gives, it's almost, uh, you know, the aftertaste is pretty persistent through, you know, after a few sips. Yeah. And I like it. Cuts right through, man. Yeah, it's good. It's actually, yeah. um, when you're craving something that is still um, a quaffable, moderate alcohol beer, but hoppy, and you don't want to go to that 7.5% really laden, fruit balmy IPA, I, there's still a great place in this world for beers that are hop forward, enough malt backbone, and still highly drinkable at 5.6%. Yep. Keep it simple. Well, I still have lots of more hops to go. Maybe <laughs> the first pick. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, maybe a different story so I could do that. And then also I have some plans for the magnum plant that I have. I had a pretty good harvest of that this year, too. Um, have more lager <laughs> aspirations for that. Probably just do 60-minute boil of whatever I have, you know. Yeah. And then if I have more than I think I need for the recipe, the rest will just be given back to the earth <laughs> in the go. backyard. So, Great. Well, that's that's this year's uh, edition, at least edition number one. We can check back maybe uh, in a month or two if I feel like using the rest of the hops that are in my freezer, get that out of the way, maybe make some room for, you know, frozen foods um, and not uh, be tormented every time someone opens the fridge and say, like, what are you going to use these hops? All in due time. We'll get the frozen lasagna next week. How about that? All right, so that is uh, the latest and greatest of the Harvest Ale. If you have your own hops that you grow at home, I know that you can't do that everywhere, but if you do have the ability to do that, uh, let, let, leave us some comments in, in, uh, in our YouTube page below. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers. Cheers.